Hi everyone, welcome to the module of drug related problems in clinical pharmacy practice. Uh, my name is Nur Azati Atira. Uh, I'm a lecturer in School of Pharmaceutical Sciences, uh, University of Science Malaysia. Next is the risk and quality of life the impact. So is patient at risk for complications with an existing disease state? So for example, if, uh, if the patient is having a renal failure, will the patient be at risk for complications? Are the types of that complications and how it may impact the quality of life of the patient? And second question you need to ask, is the therapy adversely impacting patient's quality of life and how so? So for example, the patient is taking uh, uh, tramadol for chronic pain, but uh, the patient cannot really function well because of the dizziness and the drowsiness. So it adversely impacting patient's quality of life actually, even though the therapy is needed in that patient. So, so how will you manage that problem? Is the patient is required or recommended to take preventive measures like immunization, any uh, testing like mammograms or or pap smear so these are the things or genetic or any genetic uh, testings uh, if required so you will be, you need to also keep track on that the next uh, big component is the drug interactions so we have several types of drug interaction drug drug interaction drug disease uh, drug herbs drug food so we have several types of drug interactions it may involve drug drug interaction drug disease uh, drug food interaction and also drug and herbs including OTCs. So it is important to identify the drug drug interactions with clinical significance in which requires any adjustment of the uh, drug itself or the uh, including the dose or duration of therapy. So is there any relative contraindication given patient characteristics and current or past disease state? So this is about a drug disease interaction in which any diseases that might interfere with the current therapy or any contraindication to be given certain medication if the patient based on the patient's characteristics and uh, disease state. Next is there any uh, drug food interaction that have a clinical significance in which requires any adjustment and any drug lab test interactions with clinical significance uh, is the drug is causing any interference with the laboratory parameters. So points to consider is the type of drug interaction itself. Is it pharmacokinetic interactions re, uh, involving absorption, distribution, metabolism, or elimination? Or is it uh, pharmacodynamically related, which might be which might be causing synergistic effect of the, of the two medications, or is it antagonistic effect in which two drugs are actually antagonizing each other in terms of the mechanism of action or the response. And the important thing as well is the drug interaction is clinically significant in this patient. Some of the drug interaction might be common, but it does not um, affect the patient clinically, so we might not want to do any adjustment for that. Only for those with clinical uh, significance, we need to do some. Uh, we need to uh, do some. We need to do any alteration in uh, the patient regimen in the drug regimen. The potential seriousness of that drug interactions. Is it going to be? Uh, is the uh, is the effect is going to be is the effect is bleeding, so any potential uh, seriousness of the drug drug interaction will it cause bleeding, which is uh, considered as serious, or it is just um, a minor delay in absorption, for example, which might not require any uh, dose adjustment. Does it require any spacing of drug intake? So this is more of um, drug interactions involving the absorption. So does it does it require spacing of drug intake? And uh, this involves the uh, drug interactions involving drug absorption. 
Does it require increment or reduction of the dose? And does it require drug of the change of drug therapies? As for the social or recreational drug use or drug abuse, is the patient currently ha- are using any um, illegal drugs or sh- social or uh, recreational drugs? And is this history or is this is this current use is actually causing a problem to the current drug therapy or is there any symptoms that the patients are experiencing are related to the sudden withdrawal or discontinuation of uh, social drugs or illegal drugs and how will it affect the treatment or drug therapy that the patient is currently undergoing or taking also to consider the routine use of caffeine uh, tobacco and alcohol intake next is the financial impact so is the tra- is the therapy that the patient is planned to give or is taking is actually cost effective for that type of uh, disease or condition and does the cost of therapy represent a financial hardship for the patient so you need to evaluate whether uh, the patient is actually having any financial hardship if they need to buy the medication themselves because many of the uh, newer drugs are not in the are not funded by the government so but the patient requires that medication so you need to evaluate whether the patient can really afford or getting any support to get that medication. So next is the patient knowledge of therapy, whether the uh, patient understand the rule of their medication and uh, whether they know how to take it properly and whether they are informed about the potential side effects that they might be experiencing. So that uh, level of knowledge actually will uh, affect their adherence or concordance to the medication use. So does the patient understand the role of non-drug therapy? Certain medical conditions in which the role of non-drug therapy is uh, important, then the patients also need to be given information on the um, on the benefit of uh, diet, for example, and exercise. Um, apart from the medication that the patient's taking. And would the patient benefit from educational tools? So this is highly dependent on the patient factor in itself, patient's age, patient's um, uh, familiarity with the tool that we want to give. So we need to identify patient factor itself, whether the patient can really benefit from any educational tools that we that we suggest. Next is the adherence or compliance. So it is also a big um, a big component in drug-related problems. Is there any problem with non-adherence to drug or non-drug therapy? So we need to ad- evaluate patients' adherence and compliance using several tools uh, available. So are there barriers to adherence or factors hindering the achievement of uh, therapeutic efficacy? And once we identify that the patient is non-adherence or non-compliance, then we need to find out what are the barriers to adherence. So what are the things that hinders them from uh, from achieving the therapeutic efficacy? And also points to consider here is a pattern of non-adherence. Uh, yeah. Is it a failure to follow up? Whether the patient have a failure to follow up treatment is the patient taking incorrect dose, which causing them to have side effects or non or low in uh, response, in which it will um, in which it will reduce the motivation to take the drug further? Is there any omission of dose? Is the is the dose is the drug is discontinued too soon? Any incorrect in technique, for example, inhalers or technique of uh, injecting insulin and what. Other potential causes of non-adherence, we need to identify any miscommunication uh, from healthcare providers with the patient that is causing them to actually not taking the drug properly according to the regimen. Any language barriers that that might affect the adherence or any side effects as uh, mentioned earlier. Next is the self-monitoring. 
So does the patient perform appropriate med self-monitoring? So this is more importantly in patients with chronic diseases in which they need to uh, regularly self-monitor their parameters or their um, their their parameters or their condition. For example, BP uh, for hypertension patient or uh, glucose level for diabetics for diabetic patients. So is the correct technique is employed during the self-monitoring, even if the patient do it regularly, it's whether they they are using the correct technique of using uh, the BP uh, monitor, for example. And if self is the self-monitoring performed consistently at appropriate times and with appropriate frequency. So points to consider when you do the... Um, Assessment is to assess the technique of using medical device if they have, uh, if they need to use any medical device during the monitoring, and uh, identify any potential barriers to self monitoring like um, affordability of that moni uh, monitoring devices or any uh, difficulty of patient um, going to certain uh, facilities to go for a checking. That's all for this uh, topic of drug-related problems. So we will continue with the next lesson in the next video. So thank you very much.